Welcome to LHA Church. You're about to hear another inspirational message from Pastor Jerry Galloway, lead pastor here at Lighthouse Assembly. It's our prayer that this message is an encouragement and blessing to your life. It's good to see each one of you today in the house of the Lord. We always look forward to Sunday when we can be together and be together in His presence and worship Him and give Him honor and give Him praise. Always good to see each one of you. If you have your Bibles this morning, if you will take them out and turn with me today to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter number 9. I want to begin sharing with you today some of the direction the Lord has been speaking to my heart for quite some time concerning our church and our this upcoming year. Aren't you glad today that we serve a God who still speaks to his people? You know, folks, he's always speaking. Sometimes we're just not always listening. And I'm thankful that he takes us in moments, and I'm thankful for the days when he catches us off guard, and he speaks to us. And Today I want to share with you some of the things that he's been placing upon my heart. 1 Corinthians chapter number 9 is where we're going, beginning in verse number 24. If you have your Bible, if you have an electronic device, you're welcome to log into you version. I apologize if you were here by chance for the first service, it was not published, and we realized it wasn't published after the service. Um, it is now published, and you can find it. So you just go to the events tab, log in there, and you'll find LHA Church listed, and you can have all the scriptures and the notes for today. First Corinthians chapter number 9, verse 24. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Therefore, because of that, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. The Christian life has been frequently throughout the scriptures compared to a race. Our journey that you and I are on is a race and that race has been described throughout the word from the starting line to the finish line. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14 says, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Galatians 5 and 7, you were running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? Hebrews 12 and verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. These are the words of the Apostle Paul as he is coming to uh, the soon close of his life. And he says these words, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all those who have longed for his appearing. Friends, there is a spiritual race for us to run. It's a race that does not end when this physical life is over. But the culmination of the race 
It all comes to a close when you and I see Jesus face to face in eternity. And we receive the prize, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord himself will give to us on that day. What a future awaits us. I remind you again today, our best is yet before us. It's not behind us. God has greater things in store for your life that's ahead of you. And I want to encourage you, this is not my sermon, but I want to encourage you in this. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't give in. Don't stop now. The best thing's yet to come for us. Listen, there's good things ahead if you'll just hold on and run the race with perseverance. Keep pressing on. Keep pressing on. Keep pressing on. Don't give in. Don't give up. There's good things ahead of us. He said the crown of righteousness, which the Lord himself will give to us on that day is ahead of us. 1 Corinthians 9 is where we're going to spend our time together today. So if you want to keep your Bible or your electronic device open to that passage, and for a few minutes I want to uh, share with you from this passage, and then I want to take some time at the conclusion just to share some some very thoughts that the Lord has laid upon my heart uh, concerning each of us uh, as individuals at LHA and also as a church body. First thing that we see in this passage of Scripture is found in verse 24, and we find this fact that we're all in the race together. Verse 24, he says, Don't you know that in a race all the runners run? Friends, we're in this together. The day that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you started running the race, and you started doing so along with others. Some of you have been running the race literally for decades. Some of you have been running it for years. Some of you have been running it for months. And even some of you in this room today, you've just been running the race for days. But we're all running the same race. The truth is this race is something we can all relate to. This race where uh, we're running, you and I can encourage one another along the way. We can cheer one another on to the finish line. You see, these are not separate races. Though you have to run your race for yourself and I've got to run my race for myself, we're both still on the same track. We're still running the same race. We still have the same goal. We're still going to the same place. We're still serving the same Lord. We're still serving the same Savior. We still have the same Holy Spirit that's empowering us. Let me tell you, we're all in this thing together today. Can you say amen? We may encourage one another along the way while we're in this race. The truth is, some of you who've walked this journey for a long time, you've seen pitfalls along the way. You've endured some hardships. Sometimes you've fallen and had to get back up. The song says it well, through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. I want to tell you something. I've come through them. And though there may be more ahead of me, I'm going to come through those too. And though there's more ahead of those, I'm going to come through those too. For he that is promised is faithful. He who will be with me in the past, he'll be with me in the present. And friend, he's going to be with me in my future. For he began this work in me. And the Bible says he's going to complete it in my life. We're all in this together. We're all familiar with the race. We're familiar with its difficulties. We're familiar with its victories. Do you remember as a kid running a two-legged race? When they do that, they'd take and they'd tie some some type of material or handkerchief around it, and the two of you would be bound together in the race, and you'd run the race side by side by side. Friends, I want to tell you, you and I are bound in this race together by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are empowered in this race by the powerful Holy Spirit. We are bound in this race by the Word of God that says He's given us everything that we need to live a godly life in this world. We're in the race together. And I want to encourage you today to be an encouragement to somebody else that's running the race. If you see somebody who's down, speak a kind word to them. Say a prayer for them and say, Lord, lift them up today. Maybe you want to send them a card and put a scripture in there. Just encourage their heart as you and I together run this race. 
You know, last night, I was kind of going over my notes, and I had went down into part of the house, and it was kind of quiet down there, and I was just had my Bible out, and I was going over my notes and just thinking through today and what it might be. And my wife up on one of the walls right by where I was sitting, she had this sign. And I'm going to read it to you because inevitably when I try to say it on my own, I always mess it up. So I'm going to read my notes to you. The sign said this, we may not have it all together, but together we have it all. Listen, we're not all perfected. We don't have, you know, everything all worked out. But together, we've got it all. Together as the body of believers, we're going to make it in this race. Together in this race, we're all going to get together around the throne of God one day. And we're going to look back and say, wasn't that an incredible journey? But we made it all together. Secondly, the next thing we find in verse number 24, Paul speaks about our spiritual ambition. He says, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Now, the good news of this race is that we all win. Now, tonight, for those of you who love football, you're going to be glued to the TV tonight. For some of you, you're rooting for your team. And the truth is, we're sitting here today, and you don't know if your team's going to win or lose. And you say, oh, yeah, I know it, Pastor. My team is going to win. Famous last words. <laughs> and you say, I'm sure they're going to win. But the truth is, nobody's going to know who wins till the game's over. Isn't that right? But I've got good news for you. The race you and I are in will not be determined someday. The race that you and I are in has already been determined. And he says in the back of the book that we win. He says we will overcome. He says we're going to be more than conquerors. He says we're not on the losing team. We're on the winning side. And he's going to carry us through till we get to the finish line together. Paul talks about our spiritual ambition. He talks about spiritual passion inside us. Paul says, run in such a way as to get the prize. Run like you're going to win the race. The other night, Paul and I, we were at Taylor University, and we go over there to exercise and exercise, kill ourselves. I'm not sure which one is the right word there, but, but we do it. And uh, we walked in, and there's a long hallway, and it goes down by the indoor track, and and there was these young people, and they were running on the track. And, uh, you know, some of them were out there just kind of, oh, yeah, I, I got this down. I'll, I'll get around. And, and we're just, we're just kind of standing there watching groups of them kind of go by. You know, I told you we're all on a race. Man, these kids, they were all running as a group together, and they're just running around. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere comes this young man. And I mean, he is 90 to nothing. He's passing everybody. He's going around the cars. I'm like, how does he keep going? I think I'd have died in the first 10 feet. And he's just running. And he's passing these groups. And he's going around. I'm like, that's the determination I want to have in running this race for Jesus. I just don't want to haphazardly be running this race. But I want to run with the desire to win. I want to be the one that crosses the finish line. I want to be the one that hears the words, well done, good and faithful servant. I don't want to just barely make it. Listen, he's given me too many promises for me just to barely make it. He's given me too many promises for me to be sad, discouraged, and disillusioned. He's given me so many promises that spiritual ambition says I'm going to win this race in Jesus' name. I want to talk to you today about your spiritual ambition. Friends, the enemy of our soul tries to discourage, disillusion, and deter us from running the race. Difficult moments in our lives. Seasons of failure. All work to get us to give up and stop running the race. For some, while they've been running the race, they have fallen and they've gotten back up. And they started running. But this time, it was different. Because of the injuries they sustained in the fall, they stopped running with ambition. They stopped running with passion. And now they're just kind of going through the motions of running the race. 
They're saying to themselves, well, i got to run the race to get to heaven, but that's about all I'm going to do. There's no ambition, no passion, no fire, no enthusiasm, no drive within them to run this race. Friend, my prayer for you today, my prayer for this church, my prayer for this preacher is that God will ignite and that God will awaken within us a passion for running this race and not just to run it for ourselves, but to run it and help others along the way, others who are like us and those who have yet to start running the race, that we'll bring them in and they can join us in running the race till we get to the finish line. I don't want to just run. I want to run to win. I don't want to go out of this race weary, tired, and wore out. My prayer is that God will allow me to live to a ripe old age. And when I go out, I'm going to be old. Some days I feel old now, but I'm going to be older when I go out of this race. But my determination is I'm not going to go out of this race tired, weary, puckered up, bad attitude, bitter, angry at everybody else and every other thing. I'm going to go out saying, this has been the greatest thing. I'm going to go out with the Apostle Paul and say, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race and I kept the faith. And this has been a good journey. And God has been faithful. And God has been true. And God has seen me through. And God will see you through. I want to be a good inspiration for the other runners. I don't want other people to go, good Lord, how is he still even in the race? I don't want people to look at me and say, I pray God doesn't ever let me get like that. I want to run the race to encourage other people. I want to tell you, you can make it in the race. I want to tell you, you can do this thing. I want to tell you that God is in you, and greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. I want to tell you, you can win this race, and that God's on your side. And if God's on your side, who then shall you be afraid of? I want to tell you, he's behind you. He's pushing you. And now, friend, is he behind you? He's before you. He's in your past, and he's in your future. He'll carry you through. I want to tell you, you can make it in this race. You can make it in this race. It's about spiritual passion. What's the condition today of your spiritual passion for the race? Listen to the words in Romans 12, verses 11 and 12. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Wow, that, that's good stuff, isn't it? I'm going to read that again because some of y'all didn't get it first time. Never. Somebody say never. never. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. Don't burn out. Don't burn up. Keep your spiritual fervor doing what? Serving the Lord. Look at your neighbor say, be joyful. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10 says, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Paul said to young Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 6, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of my hands. I pray, friend, today that if you have lost your zeal, if you've lost your passion in serving the Lord and running this race, that today you'll be filled with a new expectancy, a new passion, and a new zeal for running this race in Jesus' name. Number three, we find in verse number 25, we have to be reminded that the rewards of this race are eternal. Verse 25 says, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. You know, we spend so much of our time on this worth working and laboring, frankly, for things that uh, will not last. Things that are temporary. We spend our time working and laboring and worrying over our money 
that will be spent and gone. Either you'll spend it or the people you leave it to will spend it. Houses are in a constant state of decay and continual need of repairs. Your health and my health, though we can improve it, the older we get, it flees us. Everything around us is temporary. Friends, this race that we're running, listen to me this morning. If you don't hear anything else, this preacher says they hear this. The race that we're running is the most important thing in your life. It's the thing that deserves the greatest energy because it's the only thing that will last forever. The time that you invest in running this race with passion will bring about a harvest in eternity. The time you invest in helping others along the way in this race is the only thing you can take to heaven. And the energy that you work with to bring new runners into the race is the only thing that you can truly work for that will have any lasting effects. The truth is when we step out of this life and into the next, everything here stays. The money stays. The house stays. The notoriety stays. Everything you've worked to accomplish that's temporary stays. But listen to me. If you'll win people to Jesus Christ, you can take people to heaven with you. It's the only thing that goes to heaven with you. Everything else is here and remains. I want to encourage you. Give your best energy to the thing that will bring the best results in your life. The truth is you're going to work year after year after year after year. And you're going to earn money. You know, I started working. For those of you who have been around this town very long, uh, you know Hank's Supermarket. I worked at Hank's Supermarket. I started at Hank's Supermarket when I was 16 years old. I would work. I would get out of school, change my clothes, get to work, sack groceries all evening, go home, do my homework, go to bed, go to school, get up, go to work, sack groceries, get to carts in, in the cold and the snow, and carry groceries out. It was years ago. We carried, actually, groceries out for people at that point. Put them in your car. You didn't get them little flimsy bags like you get at the Walmart now. We had nice paper sacks. And put all your stuff in it. We'd get them out, put them in your car. And I'd, at the end of the week, I'd earn a paycheck. And I thought I was the richest guy in the world. Because at 16, I had money that was my own. And you know what? I worked there. Let's see, one, two. I worked there for five years. I worked there through high school and through college. I worked there for five years with them. And I couldn't tell you, I don't have anything today of the money I earned then. Not one thing. I can't tell you anything that I bought then. I worked to buy a car. Man, that car's been gone so long, it's probably in the junk pile years ago. When I got the car, it was older than me. <laughs> and it's gone. The clothes that I bought then, Lord, they're really gone. I was about this wide when I was 16 years old. I could about got my whole waist right there in my thigh right now. <laughs> Anything I put my energy, it's gone. You're going to spend the entirety of your life working. All the paychecks you said, well, I've got to have this overtime because I need this. And I've got to do that. And I've got this. And I've got to do that. Listen, you're not going to remember them in the long term. But the one thing that will carry over with your life, I can tell you this. I remember experiences as a teenager in the house of God. I remember at 18 years of age receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit and my life was radically changed by Jesus Christ. Now see, I'll tell you, I'm still carrying that. I got that at 18 and I'm not 18 now, but I'm still carrying it from when I was 18. It's still a part of my life and listen, it didn't wear out. It gets sweeter and sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. You need to invest your life in the things that really bring about eternal results.
this race of eternal rewards, listen to the way that John describes the finish line in Revelation 21, verses 3 and 4. He says, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Listen, friends, this race has eternal rewards. Number four, we find in verses 26 and 27, it's this truth. We must approach the race with purpose. Look what he says in verse 26. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Friends, we're not just running the race because it's the right thing to do. It's not because this is just what we're supposed to do because we want to make heaven. Though all these things are good, they're not the purpose to run the race. Philippians 3 and 14 says, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Paul said, I press on with purpose. I want to ask you today, friend, have you lost your sense of purpose in serving the Lord and running the race? Have you lost sight of why you're doing this? Why are you coming to church? Why are you reading your Bible? Why are you faithfully serving the Lord? Have you lost sight of your purpose? Have you become disillusioned as to why you're running this race? Friends, we're to run this race with perseverance. Paul said, I press on to win the prize. I run with purpose. My life is for his will. My life is for his destiny. It's really not about what Jerry wants because he is my Lord. It's really about what he wants. I love the words of Acts 13 and 36. It says this, David, talking about King David. David served God's purpose in his generation. Friend, God has a purpose for your life in this generation. God has a purpose in your life this year. God has a purpose in your life in this church. God has a purpose in your life in this community. There's a purpose for you in Jesus. Friend, he bought you with a price. And he empowered you with his blessed Holy Spirit inside of you. And he's given you, as the word says, very great and precious promises so that you might fulfill your purpose in this life and for this generation. Can I ask you today, have you been serving your purpose or God's purpose? Are you busy fulfilling your agenda or his agenda? Friends, there is nothing that will satisfy your life like living in God's purpose for you. Live for something that's bigger than you are. But if you live your whole life just for you, when you get to the end, there's not going to be anything. If you live this life just for you, man, that's, a, I don't mean to offend you, but that's a waste. Because there's so many other lives need to be touched. If you spend your life only doing what you want, when you want, how you want, how will anyone else come to know Jesus Christ as Savior? I want to encourage you, begin to live your life with purpose. Something that's bigger than you are. Something that's a greater dream than just what you have. That's really the heart of what I believe God has for our church. Really not just for this year, but for our future. You see, nothing will satisfy your life like living for God's purpose. Live for something greater than your desires. Let your life be counted in the race with those who run with purpose. Several months ago, 
I was um, on a trip over to Ohio. And I was on Interstate 70. And I'm just kind of driving down the road and uh, just kind of, you know, killing time. I don't remember what Paula was doing. She was sitting on the other side. She may have been drawing or writing or sleeping. I don't know. Usually we get in the car and I pull it in gear and her eyelids go down when, when we take off. I don't remember what she was doing, but I distinctly remember, and I can take you, even to this day, I can take you back to the place on I-70. I was driving down the road, and the Lord just dropped two words into my heart. And you ever have those times that God catches you off guard? I'll be honest with you, I wasn't thinking about those things. You know, I just kind of, usually when I get in the car, that's kind of my zone out time. I, I watch the other cars around me, but I don't think much beyond what I'm doing at the present moment. And I was driving down the road, and the Lord dropped two words in my heart, and it was these words, building champions. Building champions. And it was immediate. I mean, it was one of those God moments. One of those moments that you go, man, that, that didn't come from Jerry. God said, that's what I want the purpose of Lighthouse to be, is building champions for the cause of Jesus Christ. Building champions for the kingdom of God. Building champions. Folks, listen. God has given too many great promises for your life for us to not excel in our walk with Jesus. He's given too many promises and he's given us too much power in the Holy Spirit for us just to kind of limp on through this life and on down the race. God wants to build the spirit of a champion inside of each one of us. Building champions who will serve God's purpose in this generation. Building champions who will be the agent of change in our world today. Building champions for the kingdom of God. I believe that's our destiny and our purpose. Listen, I'm not talking about just uh, so everybody looks good. I'm talking about effectively serving Jesus Christ. I'm talking about accomplishing things for the kingdom of God. He didn't put us here just so we could be a church down in this Y on J and Lincoln Boulevard. He put us here to be a light to shine in the darkness. He put us here to be angels of change in our community. He's placed us here to champion the cause of Jesus Christ. The cause of Jesus Christ that says though everyone is unsaved Jesus Christ can save you I want to tell you that's God's heart and so now in conclusion what I want to do I just want to share really some thoughts with you that the Lord spoke to my heart and has been speaking to my heart for several months it was this that, that Lighthouse Assembly will better equip believers for running this race that with God's help that we'll build an atmosphere for spiritually healthy believers you know in our physical bodies we can be fighting disease and sickness can I tell you this in our spirit man we can also be harboring disease and sickness but that's not God's plan for our lives. He wants you and I to be healthy believers. Healthy, growing believers. Believers who can accomplish the task God's called us for. You know, I've seen so many that were disappointed in their walk with Christ. Feeling like they were never quite enough. Never realizing their potential in Jesus Christ. Always feeling like they were just outside of those things. Like it was just outside of their grasp. Others have it. But it seemed like they could never attain it. Always seeing. Always hearing the promises of God. But never quite attaining them. Many only speak what they are not. Rather than who they are. Paul said, I am more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. Friend, that's not a pride thing. That's an understanding thing. That's a revelation thing. I know, oh, I may not be the best at everything, but listen, in Jesus Christ, I am more than a conqueror through him who loved me and called me according to his purpose. I want you to win in Jesus' name. 
I want you to experience the thrill. Notice I use the word thrill. I want you to experience the thrill of serving Jesus Christ. The reality and the power of his word. And I want you to experience the incredible power of his Holy Spirit. Friend, who can enable you to do anything in Jesus Christ. I want you to climb the heights of faith. Scale over the walls of doubt. And boldly, boldly walk into the enemy's camp. And in Jesus' name, take back all the things the devil has stolen from you. Take back the gifts God's given you. Take back the promises God's given you. Take back the things God's done in your life. Walk boldly as a champion into the enemy's camp. And take back what the enemy's taken from you. I want to see you serve Jesus with vitality, spiritual life in abundance. I want you to have joy that is unspeakable and full of the glory of God. I don't want anyone in this church to miss out on anything God's planned for them. His promises have been given. His power has been provided through his spirit. His love is behind you. And in his name, you cannot lose. You will not falter. And you will not fail. But you will overcome, the end of the book says. You will overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. We're not going out of this thing losers. Friends, we're on the winning side. We're going to win in the end. Because greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world world your greatest days i'm going to keep telling you until you believe me your greatest days are ahead of you and not behind you you're in the place of his promise you're in the place of his provision and his power and i pray that he will fill your belly with fresh fire, fresh fervor, and a greater passion to learn of him and serve of him and live for him. That you will experience the heights that only come in knowing Jesus Christ. My prayer is that your light will shine in the darkest of nights. May the light he's put inside of you displace the darkness around you. May it put the enemy on high alert and bring hope to those around you who are perishing. Listen, I believe in you. He believes in in you. And because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world, you're going to make it in Jesus' name. Amen. And in his name, by his grace, by his mercy, and by his power, in God's help, his wisdom, and his anointing, we're going to build champions for the cause of Jesus Christ. We're going to build champions for the cause of faith. We're going to build champions that are going to cross the finish line and hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Now, Father, as I stand before you in this place and in front of these people, I come to you today and I ask you, oh God, I ask you to fulfill your word in us. Your word tells us that you've given us everything that we need to live a godly life. Everything we need to champion the cause of faith. Everything we need to champion the purpose of Jesus Christ. Father, I believe your word is true. And I believe not one of your good promises has ever failed your people. God, I pray you'll help us today. I pray, God, today for those that are sitting on the sidelines. They're watching everybody else that's running by. Maybe in the past they've been hurt and they've been disappointed and they've sat down. God, I pray today in the name of Jesus, God, they'll get back up and start running the race. I pray for those that are here in this place today and they don't know you, Jesus, as their Savior and Lord. But they say, you know what? I need you, Jesus. I need you to be the Lord of my life. Father, I pray today they would start running the race with us. And I pray for those who are running. God, they're running with all they have. 
God, I pray today you'll give them a shot of spiritual adrenaline. I pray, God, you'll place a fresh fire in their belly. I pray, God, today you'll renew passion. I pray, God, you'll renew spiritual ambition. God, I ask you to do it today in the lives of these men and women. God, would you do it in me? Do it in me. God, I want fresh fire. God, I want a greater passion for you than I've ever had before in my life. God, I don't want to just exist. I don't want to just go through the motions. God, I want to accomplish everything you've purposed and destined for me. God, and I know that's the prayer of these people today. I pray, God, you'll hear the prayer and the cry that's in our hearts. God, I pray you'll accomplish it in us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Friend, if that's your prayer today, you say, I want to be a champion for the cause of Jesus Christ. Say, I, I want to accomplish everything he has purpose for my life. And I don't want to just make it through. But I want to be a champion for him. If that's you, would you stand up this morning and make your way to the front of this church and stand across the front as other runners are coming. Others that are in the race are coming. We're going to walk. You say, I want to be a champion. I want to champion the cause of Jesus Christ in my life. You say, that's my prayer. That's my passion. That's my heart. I believe you, Jesus. I trust you, Father. I trust you, Father. Just keep moving in, if you will. I'd like for as many to be able to, to come around the front with us. Jesus. There's so much potential in this room right now. There's so much opportunity. You may only see yourself just, you know, we usually kind of know ourselves by our flaws. We know ourselves by the things maybe we're not good at. We see ourselves not as we are, but sometimes just how we could be. I declare to you today, in Jesus' name, if the Spirit of God is living inside of you, you are more than a conqueror. You are more. You're not just a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. What God has placed inside of you is so precious that only His Son could give it. God emptied the treasury of heaven to place it inside of your life. You are the carrier of something that only heaven could ordain. You are the carrier of the very Spirit of God. You're not just anybody. You are His body. You're His people. Here's what I'd like to do this morning. I want to pray. I want to pray a prayer over you. But for you individually, um, I'd like for you, if you would, just to take your hands and hold them like this as a point of surrender and yielding. And while I pray over you, I, I want to encourage you to pray this type of prayer. Lord, I give myself to you. Lord, I give you my life. I give you my strengths. I give you my weaknesses. I give you everything that makes me who I am, Lord. And I pray, God, you'll take my life and make me a champion for you. Pray that direction while I pray of you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, I know that our words are not empty. And I know that our words have great power. And I know that as I pray this morning, God, I know that you hear me right now. God, you're hearing every word that's being spoken in this room. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for runners that are in the race. I pray in the name of Jesus, you will encourage them in their faith. And I pray for those who felt like giving up. I pray for those who have sat on the sideline. I pray for those... God, I pray for those who are sitting on the sideline and they are injured. They are
are disappointed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now in Jesus' name, God, that you will speak healing into their lives. And I pray the spirit of anticipation and I pray the spirit of encouragement will fill them. And I pray in Jesus' name, they'll no longer sit on the sidelines, but they'll get back up in Jesus' name. They'll get back up in Jesus' name. They'll not remain where they've been. The devil won't have his plan. The enemy won't have his way. They're going to get back up in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for those who have been running the race. But God, they've kind of lost sight of their purpose in running the race. It's just become ordinary. It's just become, this is what I do. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, I pray each one, they'll never be lacking in zeal. I pray, God, you'll increase spiritual fervor, spiritual passion in their heart. I pray today in Jesus' name, you'll give them new purpose, new direction. I pray in Jesus' name that a new fire will begin to burn in their hearts. I pray, God, I pray if there's only ashes where there was once a fire. Lord, I pray the wind of the Holy Spirit will begin to blow across the coals that's underneath that ash of the fire that once was. And I pray the Holy Spirit would begin to ignite a fresh fire in their life in Jesus' name. And Father, right now, I pray for those who are running the race. And God, I pray for those as they run the race, they're doing so with ambition and spiritual passion. God, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, you'll keep renewing their strength. I pray they'll mount up with wings like eagles. I pray they'll run and not get weary. I pray they'll walk and not faint. I pray, God, you'll give them greater vision for the end, for the goal, for the finish line. I pray they'll bring others with them. They'll encourage others along the way. They'll speak words of hope and faith into their lives. Father, in Jesus' name. Help us, Father, to build champions for you. Help us, God, to build champions out of one another. Lord, let us speak the words of a champion to one another. Lord, let us speak words that will bring healing and help, strength and vitality in the name of Jesus. Father, I trust you for these things. I believe you today for these things. And my hope is is in you for all these things. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. So be it in the name of the Lord. Here's what I'd like to encourage you to do today. This may be a little different for some of you. Um, some of you, this won't be no problem. Some of you, it may test you a little bit. I want to encourage you to find somebody that's not in your family, somebody that doesn't ride in the car with you or Go to the same house where you're at. Find somebody else in the church today and just look them straight in the eye and say, you are a champion for God. You're a champion for God. You're a champion for God. And as you leave today, encourage those around you. You're a champion for God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his grace and strength be yours. We love you. Have a great day. May the joy of the Lord always be your strength. God bless.